Hey everybody, welcome back to Church Talk, where we talk about everything involving the local church. My name is Rob, and today we have some special guests with Kingdom Talk. Welcome back, guys. We're back again with Kingdom Talk Podcast. We got another guest back in the studio. Uh, we got Rob Neal. It's good to be here, man. Yep. And we got Andrew Neal. What's up? How are you guys? And we got Hunter. And Hunter, yeah. as always. Episode 11. Yeah, you can't, can't forget Hunter. We're doing good, man. Doing good. I'm excited today because we, we are collaborating uh, Church Talk with Kingdom Talk. Yeah. So we're on a podcast plus on a YouTube. Yeah. So you guys who are watching um, who are watching YouTube right now, you get to you get to meet the guys who are on Kingdom Talk because you only hear because they're on you're on what? You're on Spotify. Spotify. Yep. Yes. Yep. So how do you how do you find your all's how do you find it? Um, you just go to Spotify, type in Kingdom Talk and then it's should be right there. Cool. Seth Fitzwater and Hunter Chapman. Yeah. Host awesome. and co-host. I only yeah. listen to two podcasts. Yeah. And one of them's your all's, and one of them is uh, Sarah and Brittany's. Yeah. They just so. started a page, Christopher <laughs> yeah. Gathering. Make sure you guys check that one out. Yeah. Yes. There, it's on Spotify. I know I'm excited. Hunter, how are you feeling today? I'm, I'm excited. That makes three of us. Probably <laughs> four of us. <laughs> Andrew, how are you? I've been busy just getting mixed for uh, his channel. Okay. Yeah. So it's... Yeah, I think it'll be mostly set and forget once I'm done. But okay. we're yeah. getting going. <laughs> you yeah. guys, you guys who are watching, uh, you don't normally see Andrew ever. So today he was uh, going to be substituting for Seth, and yeah. Seth's like, "Wait a minute, that's not the day that I need to be off." So, uh, so we got four of us. So Andrew's, yep. you don't normally see him, and he's usually behind the camera and <laughs> behind the audio and doing all that type of stuff for me. So uh, today you get to you get to see some behind the scenes. Ta-da! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we should just hop right into it. All right. Yeah. Do it. So I mean, start with you. Uh, just a little bit of your testimony, like how you got involved in church. Ah, uh, I was born in the church. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no, really. Uh, my family was um, in church. I, I don't ever remember a time we didn't go to church. Um, so, so I got saved when I was about twelve years old. I okay. uh, just it was in a revival, it was a Friday night revival, and and don't remember who the pastor was, the preacher was. It was some evangelist, and um, he was like, you know, he just preaching. And I just felt the draw of the Holy Spirit. I felt the Lord just draw me, and I remember um, feeling like I should go up front mm-hmm. and just go to the altar, and uh, and I didn't, and yeah. so <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, so I told the guy beside me, like, hey Scott. Um, at the end of service, would you, would you like go with me? He's like, yeah. So the end of service came. I sat there. It didn't move. Mm-hmm. And Scott looked at me and said, "Come on, man." So that little, just him remembering, is what helped me get over the that first step. Because once you make that first yeah. step, it's like mm-hmm. you're you're on your way. Right. But just making that first step, and a lot of times we equate like you know salvation to a prayer, and it's not that magical prayer, but. Yeah. But most of the time, that's what we end up going through is we, we say a prayer. We, we, um, you know, we just begin to talk to the Lord. And sometimes, sometimes it looks so elementary, mm-hmm. you know, and we make it so difficult. But really all it is is we believe in our heart. Hey, guys, just a quick break from the video. Just want to say thank you for watching. And if this is the type of content that you like, make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And make sure you give it a like so that YouTube will continue to push this content on out to others. And one more thing, head over to robinjen.com slash church talk. You can find, like, the T-shirt I'm wearing, the mug that we have. Enough of that. Now back to our video. And wow, something was going on yeah, out there in the sanctuary. I can hear him. Maybe you guys can hear him too. I don't know. Uh, but uh, but it's, it's just that we, we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, and that's how we're saved. But, right. You know, I don't know why I went down through through all that. But but that's my you know short testimony is how I got involved with church. Is just I was born into a. I mean, fortunately, the Lord blessed me. I was born into a family that was in church, mm-hmm. and I've grown up in churches. And then you are the uh, worship pastor here at the bridge. So mm-hmm. how long have you been in the worship ministry? And the worship ministry? Oh, man. Um, 
probably about 20 years. So I started off in youth ministry, and at the oh, same okay. time, I was in, I was on the worship team. So, uh, yeah, probably about 20, maybe maybe longer, maybe 20, 25 years. Yeah, about okay. 25 years. All right. It's older than all you guys. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Andrew, how about you? A little bit of your testimony. Oh well, it's much the same. So I was born in church. Have gone to church for my entire life, and from the time that I remember, um, just being aware in general, um, I was a Christian. So I. I didn't, like, get saved, but I got saved, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, just kind of how it is. I'm thankful for it. Yep. It's kind of like I'm saying about there's not that, like, magic prayer, you know, that I remember there was a, there was a guy in the church we used to go to that, uh, um, in my mind, he never went to the altar, you know what I mean? He never went and, and done that 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 act that we're all supposed to go do to get saved, you know. Right. But he just began to, he had a change of, in his heart. He got saved in his home, and he just began to believe. And you could see an outward change in, in him, and he began to confess the Lord as his Savior, but he never did, he never went to an altar. He never went to the church and, like, had this big thing that happened at the church. It was just he believed in his heart. He began to come to church with his wife, and he began to be a faithful member of the church. But that was, like Andrew was saying, there wasn't this defining moment of, like, you know, uh, going to the altar and having everybody gather around you and praying for you and all this stuff. I mean, all the all these things are good. Yeah. But that's not, like... Yeah, that's not the point of it. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's not really salvation. Salvation happens when you, when you believe. Right. When you confess. And so, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why I wanted to add that in there. I just, I just did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then we're good. Um, so this week I've been thinking about what we were going to talk about, and the number two stuck into my head. And I was thinking, what is number two? Like, like what does that mean? Like, And so I went to one of my favorite parts of the Bible, which is John, and I went to chapter two, and I was like, no, this is not it. And so I I had messaged Seth, like, during work, and I was like, dude, I'm stressing out. Like, number two is stuck in my head, and I can't figure out what it is. And then I went home, and I was getting ready for bed, and it kind of hit me one time, and it happened in the book of John. And it was John 14, 14 that popped up. And I was like, two, two numbers, 14, Two plus two is four. One and one is two. Fourteen, fourteen. And so I looked it up, and it was exactly what I was looking for. Uh, it says, John chapter fourteen, fourteen says, "Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it." So I, what I got out of that was, he was asking me find it and when I was finding it I guess he was showing me that it took me finding it not relying on other people to help but like me and God having that one on one time before I went to bed to mm-hmm. find it and he was showing me that if I just keep waiting and praying that it'll come in time that's what so that I found out this week. Good word. Yeah, when he texted me, I was like, what do you mean? Because the text he sent, it was like, dude, I'm so stressed about number two. And I'm like, number two? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Number two? What do you mean number two? And so then like two hours later, he was like, oh, I understand now. <laughs> it was like, two hours. I was like, what? <laughs> but I was so lost. And then he told me, was it Sunday? He was like, oh, I finally mm-hmm. figured it out. And he explained it. But it was funny because he didn't keep me in the loop. <laughs> so I was like, I don't, I don't know. Kind of new so, to this. <laughs> so on, that, on, on the verse that, that you were talking about, mm-hmm. can you kind of say, say that again in your own words? Um, 
So, in my own words, it's pray and ask and believe in it, and it will come in time. Like, believe that it's coming, because you know it's coming, because, you know, God, God's going to do it. But just knowing that that Bible verse said to, to ask, and it, you know, it'll happen, just... Kind of, I feel like it's just like a ask and you will receive. But before you receive, you just got to have that faith that it's going to come in the time that he wants it, not yeah. the time you want it. That's good. There's a lot of times when we when we seek the Lord for something and we're asking the Lord for something. Sometimes we're we're asking without proper understanding sometimes too yeah yeah and it's like we we want something based upon what we feel in the flesh based, mm-hmm. based upon what we we think with our minds and it may not be the thing that is good for us it may not be something that the lord really wants us to even have at the moment right uh because you know let's face it like everybody's like i want to be rich i want to 10 million dollars whatever you know and many times if that prayer is answered what would we do? Yeah. Would we start serving serving the money that we got? Would we forget about the Lord because yeah. you know now we yeah. have we think we have everything that we need right. until right. we run out of it and we find out that there's no amount of money that's ever really enough. Exactly. You know, if you don't steward it correctly. Yep. Yeah. And and so even with that with that scripture, I would say too to to go back and, and read it again mm-hmm. and then to broaden out the text and look at it like within the context of what's saying. Because mm-hmm. sometimes the Lord will like point out a scripture and it's like, yeah, he, he wants to point that out. But as we dig into it and we look at the context of what what the scripture's saying, mm-hmm. that we get a better understanding. Because mm-hmm. sometimes we'll we'll come to something and we'll we'll look at the we'll look at the text and we'll be like, Yeah, that's what it means. And we do the same thing as what I was just talking about. We we come to it with our fleshly understanding, with with our, with just, you know, not really the understanding the Lord's given because He wants us to dig in deeper and know really what what is it saying a few verses before and a few verses after. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you read that and you're like, oh, that's what it's saying. And then when you broaden it a little bit more and you look at the entire chapter, yeah. And then sometimes it flows right into the next chapter because. You know, the Bible isn't really written in verses and chapters, right. it's letters. So sometimes um, sometimes there's a couple chapters that really they, they just flow together in one letter. Yep. And uh, so sometimes when we look at it in that context, it's like, oh, my goodness, there's so much more to what I was what I was thinking. Yeah. You know, and so. So, yeah, that's mm-hmm. I think that's great. You, you yeah. get a you get a just a I, I love how you you just kind of heard a number in your spirit like okay what and the first thing you done was like okay lord what's what's that what what what's the scripture and and so you begin to to think about those things Mm -hmm. um and you take it to the lord and you take it to scripture the lord will definitely speak to us and speak to you yeah Yeah. in that way because when you bring stuff into scripture it's like okay he's listening for me he's listening Mm -hmm. to me yeah and as you get more understanding of, of things as well and you start to navigate and learn how to navigate what the Lord is saying to you, because you know, face it. Sometimes when we first, even not when we first start out, but years down the road, and you're an old forty-year-old. You know, <laughs> forty's not old, by the way. But but uh, you know, when you're older, you're like. I thought I had it figured out like a few years ago and I'm finding out that I don't. And then by the time you get even older, it's like, I, I thought I had it back then. And, I, and it's like, we think we have an understanding now. It's like, as we grow, we find out that just a small piece of what God's plan really is. Yeah. No. Yeah. And also in prayer, like you mentioned before, you might not be asking for what you really, for the will of God. Jesus gave us a great example for how to pray when he prayed, Father, if possible, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but your will be done. So that's that's a good thing to add on to all your prayers is not my will, but yours be done because yeah. I might not be asking for the right thing. Yeah. 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 
That's a good point. And then, like, Lord, if my will is not what you're going to do, help me to be okay with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, help me not to be angry at you, or if, you, if I do get angry at you, help help me, help me to to be okay with whatever you're going to do. Yeah. You know, because that's that's part of it too. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I want this. No, you can't have that. But I want this. That's right. not my will. Well. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. Sometimes we have to be okay with, with, not getting our way. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, I've, I've told our worship team this a lot. I've told, you know, preached this many times. Like, our success is not based upon the outcome of what we're looking at. Uh, there's been times we would go lead worship. We'd either be invited or we were uh, just traveling around, uh, just just. Friday nights, whatever, uh, whoever could come, we're just going to release worship from there. And there were times when nobody, I mean, nobody showed up but the pastor or the pastor and the sound guy. And we're like, what are we going to do? You know, we brought all of our, all of our equipment. We've come all this way. <laughs> uh, and so what do we do? We, we worshiped because it wasn't about putting on a show yeah it wasn't no. about the outcome of how many people were there mm-hmm. but what the lord put in our hearts was to go release worship from these places okay and so as i was looking at with my eyes and i know you know uh, andrew was there and our, our other our other sons were there um it was embarrassing because i'm like i'm looking at it with my physical you know with my, my flesh i'm looking at it like nobody's here you know, this is, this is awful. Yeah. But when we push through anyway, it's like there was such a great experience, a great time of worship. Mm-hmm. And the pastor was, was like, man, this was all for me. Or sometimes at one place, just the sound guy that, that he didn't even need to do anything because we brought our own sound. He was there, and uh, he was like, man, this was, this was like it was just for me today. And so when we get out of our, our flesh for a little while and realize that did we do what the Lord told us to do, no matter what it looks like on the outside, yeah. but did we, did we say yes to the Lord? Did we follow through with what he was asking us to do or what he was telling us to do? That's where we get our success. Right. And, and it isn't from the outcome of the thing that, that we're doing. Because we always want to look at the outcome. We want good outcomes. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't? You know, we, we want to have, we want church growth. We want group <laughs> growth you yeah. know but if you're a leader especially if you're a leader and you're doing what the lord is telling you to do and your group isn't growing and your ministry seems like it's not thriving but you're doing what the lord has told you to do then you're successful yeah no matter what the outside looks like right. mm-hmm. kind of like move out of your comfort zone like like there's nobody here but i'm still going to go out of my comfort zone like there is a million people here right? because it doesn't matter if there's one or if there's a million, as long as you got God yep. and you're doing it for him, right. that's all that matters. Like right. what, when you were a youth pastor, you had like 10, 10 kids, right? I guess, Roughly. I don't know, it's hard to say kids because they're in between, but yeah. students. <laughs> um, students, yeah. Yeah. Well, a student is someone in school that you can be a 50-year-old student. That's true. That's I, true. I've but never you're still liked, eager to learn. I've never liked the use of the word student to be youth. But anyway, you had 10, <laughs> around 10 or so. 10. <laughs> but you were setting out, like, what, 50 chairs or something? Yeah. And it took a while before the 50 chairs were filled. Yeah. We, we, we would get there. When we first started in the youth ministry, we were downstairs in the church that we were in, and it was like a jail cell. I mean, it was concrete all around. I mean, it's, it's what the church had. They made it as nice as they could, mm-hmm. but it was all concrete. Concrete floor, concrete ceiling, concrete walls, uh, metal door. So no matter what we done, it was loud in there. So we'd have six or ten kids, and it was, oh, my goodness. But as the church would grow, we built a new building, and so the, the pastor allowed the youth group to move up to the, the old sanctuary, and they called it the Ed Building at, at, that, at that church, which was just for education building. And so that's when we begin to, we had, you know, six or ten kids, 
and we would set up chairs for 50 kids. And for once we got to 25 or 30, we, we would set up 60. And we kept setting up more chairs because it was like we were, we were preparing right. for 50 kids when we had 10 kids. But that was hard because it's like you don't do the same thing. But it, it was awkward. It wasn't hard. It was awkward. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. when you have 10 teenagers come in, they look around. They're like, eh, it's just youth group. It's not like there's no service. But we would we'd have service anyway. Right. And um, we would play, you know, at, at that time, we'd play a CD. This was years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, the ministry did grow. It grew to where we, we filled up the 50 seats. We were, we were running uh, close, to, close to 50 average. And we had a, a youth band uh, of youth leaders. And we, that's where I got started leading worship was for, for the teenagers. Okay. And uh, until the church pastor came to me, he's like, hey, um, I feel like your, your calling is in uh, worship ministry, and I feel like you're supposed to transition over to worship. So, um, so I did. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy how you started out in this to yeah. move to that. And now that's yeah. that, just how the Lord can use you. It's just insane. Yeah. Pastor Mike sweeping parking lots in a church to yeah. move up and be a pastor. Yeah. Yeah. Many times it's about your heart. Yeah. You know, like where where's your heart? If you're willing to come in and and just take care of the house of the Lord, um, or you're willing just to serve, no matter what area it is, it's like, you know, you know, doing what you can, it's like the Lord just blesses. Mm-hmm. And uh um because some people say, yeah, I'm, I'm really not a speaker. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a, I'm not a teacher. Um, but when you listen to them speak, it's like you should be. Because the Lord has given you yeah. knowledge and has given you insight. And, uh, but a lot of people, that insight isn't for like a mass number of people. It's like a one-on-one thing. And they're really good talking with people one-on-one. But when you put them in front of a stage or in front of people, they're like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and if the Lord hasn't called you to do it, then you're going to run, go yeah. run away because you don't want to. Right. Um, but but when the Lord calls you, and He tells you to do it, and you're obedient. There's an anointing that comes with it because I don't yeah. like being in front of people either. But when you say yes, then there's an anointing that comes in and empowers you to do what it is the Lord's told you to do. So yeah, right. Yeah. And the ser- oh, you're gonna oh go ahead. Well, the servants are the ones who God wants. Because if you're not a servant, then you're not going to be obedient to what he says. That's the reason God rejected Saul as king and put David in place as king. Because David honored God and was obedient. But Saul said, okay, I'll do what you say. And then went and did something else. And then said, it wasn't my fault. It was their fault. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like um, like our pastor always says, even if you just give an hour of your time. Mm-hmm. It's it's an hour that God wants you to give. A lot of times we, we think that what we're doing has to be something big because mm-hmm. we're we're used to that mentality of you know, we want to be successful. Right. But when we remove the successful out of it and we say we just want to be obedient, well then it goes back to like what you said, if it's just an hour if the is the Lord saying, Hey, I want you to go I want you to clean the bathrooms at your church. It's going to take you about 15 minutes each because they're, I mean, they're kept up. It's not like no. they're in horrible shape. Yeah. You know, and and you're like, ooh, clean the bathrooms? No. Well, then you're never going to have anything else. Right. Yeah. Because if you won't say yes to something that you think is small, yep. why would you be given something that you think is big? big. Right. Yeah. It's like building a house. You got to have a strong foundation, a strong yeah. foundation of obedience. Yeah. Start on that first level and build up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, we talked about that earlier today um, in the young adults group. Today, mm-hmm. kind of, it came up. Jesus was the Son of God, the Maker of everything, but He did the job of the lowest servant in the house by washing His disciples' feet. Mm. Yeah. So He, if anyone 
should be having their feet washed. It's Jesus. Yeah. But he's the one who said, okay, I'm going to wash their feet because I came to serve, not to be served. Right. Yeah. That's good. And that's what ministry is. That's what the word minister means is to serve. Mm -hmm. Right. Who's going to come here to be ministered to if the floors aren't swept or the grass isn't cut? Right. 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 Because they're going to look at that and be like, that church doesn't care. Yeah. That ministry doesn't care. And if they don't care about those things, I remember one time I was in a church and uh, the men's restroom began to stink. It smelled like an old urinal. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was, it was brought up to the pastor and, and uh, he was like, he kind of took a little bit of offense to it. Um, and, but it wasn't said in an offensive way. It was just brought up saying, hey, you know, if I think this stinks, then probably everybody else that comes in here thinks the yeah. same thing. And if they're new, they're never going to come back because they think we don't take care of our things. And if we don't take care of our things, then they're not going to take care of me either. So when I need to be ministered to, if they're not taking care of the small things, I'm not going to trust them with right. my large things, which is like my family and my life. So, so yeah, that's, that, that's a, those are good points. Yeah. I've been talking a lot. <laughs> so, uh, so you guys tell us a little bit about, about your, your, uh, uh, your, your testimony. Um, oh, I keep hitting that. So do you want to go first? You go ahead. <laughs> you All got right. This. So started out in church. I always grew up, I don't know, a life without church. And I have a great mom and dad who encouraged us to go to church. And so grew up in a Methodist house. And it was like, just it, at the time, it was like a checklist thing. Like Sunday, get up, go to church, come home. All right. Cool, now we can get on with our day. And so I never really felt the presence of God at that church. And I'm not saying that they're wrong. I, it, would, it wasn't very active. Youth group wasn't huge. We had like four people. And so COVID came and shut that church down. And then we went to online services. Didn't really... If anything, we were feeling less of the Lord. And so Tim Rutherford, who was the senior pastor here at the time, he was like, hey, you all come check this church out. We were like, sweet. So we come over, great youth group. And so we're like, we're liking it. So we just came on Wednesdays. And then we're still going to the other church on Sundays. So we're just kind of rotating. And then mom and dad are like, we're thinking that the Lord is kind of telling us to go to the bridge full time. And we're like, we're all for it. Their youth group's great. <laughs> so we move, and it's complete different side of it. And it's, it's wonderful here. And again, I'm not saying they're, they're bad or they're horrible. I'm not bashing them, but it's just, it's better here. <laughs> when you're in the place the Lord has for you to be in, it's just, it's better. Yeah. No matter if if it's the small church that's like the Lord's calling you and he wants you there and you're coming from a church of a thousand and you're coming, you're coming to join a church of 65 or 200 or whatever and it's smaller, a lot of times people think it's not going to be as good, but if that's where the Lord's calling you, it's going to be better. Right. Because that's where you're going to, you're going to find fulfillment. Yeah when you're in the will of the Lord. So that, that's cool. So Hunter? So I actually grew up in this church when I was very little. Um, cool. I came with my grandmother. Um, so we we kind of went here, and um, then we just kind of stopped going. And I went to church with my mom and dad at my mom's church. And it was nothing but piano and, like, hymns. And I was like... Okay, I'm not really feeling it. Like, I was very little, and I was like, I don't want, you know, I don't want to be here. Like, yeah. And then uh, I kind of fell out of church. And then about two, two and a half, three years ago, I came here again. And I was like, man, I feel it. And it just, it stuck with me. And I finally found the presence of God. And, 
keep awesome. it with me every day. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Where where we are relatively new to the church, we we've, we've been here at the bridge for for uh, was this a six months? So we're, we've been here for about eight months now, I think something like that. Um, and we're still we're still learning people. We're still meeting people that we see their faces and we don't know who they are. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, I know they go to the bridge. I'll see them on Facebook. And I'm like, oh, that's their name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but but it's good to hear like your all's testimonies, too, because, you know, there, there's a lot that like we just even people that's been here for years. to yeah. like listen to you speak like mm-hmm. just to just to look at you guys, just really anybody. But when you look at somebody, you don't realize, like, yeah, they come to church. Yeah, they're a Christian. But you don't know how deep they are with yeah. the Lord. You yeah. know? And I love listening to your all's podcast because there's, like, some good conversations. Yeah. And a lot of times um, when people look at other people, and I'll just go ahead and say it, when sometimes when older people look at the younger people in the church, a lot of them think, well, I'm, I'm glad they're here, but there's always this yep. but that's in mm-hmm. there. Like, yep. they need to get right with the Lord yes. you know, or, or whatever. And, like, they have no clue mm-hmm. the relationship that our uh, young adults, you know, teenagers, kids, you know, the younger generation from who, you know, from who may be saying that, they have no clue that... You guys are serious about the Lord. Yeah. And it's like the, even the the podcast. Yeah, it's fun and it's cool, but that's not the point of it. It's exactly. Like, no, the yeah. point of it is yep. just to share the Lord. Yeah. Share His Word in mm-hmm. your own way. Yeah. And you guys could possibly just by sitting in here in this room, you could you have the potential of reaching hundreds, thousands, yeah. mm-hmm. or millions. Yep. Yeah. You know, and as you begin to grow this ministry. You'll get better at it. You'll get better at, at filling the space with talking. You'll yeah. get better at at like uh, coming up with with subjects and questions and all the different things that you're learning right now. Yep. And then before mm-hmm. you know it, you're going to look back and like you're going you're going to listen to the first one, and yeah. you're like, "Oh my goodness, yeah, that's what we sounded like back yeah. then." You know? Today, <laughs> yeah. Mom was listening to it today, and she was like, "Oh, I'll put on the first one." I was like. You can just skip to the fourth one. Yeah. <laughs> she played the first one anyways. I was like, why are you doing this? Yeah. Please stop. Yeah. It was. Yeah. So it was, it was to, to see how far you've grown <laughs> so from, from your first episode to yeah. what's this epi- episode 11. Yeah. yeah. So in just the 10, 11 episodes, the growth. Well, when you look at that throughout a full year of 52 <laughs> episodes. Yeah. You know, or even two years, three years. And you start looking back at it, you're like, oh, my goodness, how did we do that on a zero budget? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, because we were talking about this before, about, like, because we brought in our, our lights and things for <laughs> for just this uh, this setup for YouTube. And they're like, oh, man, we need we need to get lights. We, we need this and we need that. And so they were saying, we have a zero budget. Yeah. This isn't well, even our stuff. This is Pastor Mike's <laughs> podcast. Stuff. This is yeah. kind of like. It's kind of the same thing as us because we we didn't spend much money. I mean, Andrew did for his business for for the camera, so we we're fortunate that he's like, "Hey, I've got it. Let's just use it." Yeah. Uh, and then you know, for our music ministry, all of our equipment was purchased and some of it given um, through throughout many years of of saving. So now when we do the the videos, I'm like. Just use what I've got. Mm-hmm. So I'm yeah. kind of the same as you guys on the YouTube channel because I think we probably started about the same time. I started in, in January. I think you guys started like just after I started, I believe. So, yeah, so our Palm Sunday, I think, was yeah, our first so our, yeah. Your all's podcast and 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 the the Church Talk YouTube channel was roughly the same age. It was born in the same year. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so yeah. If you guys are are listening to Church Talk right now. Go check out um, on Spotify, Kingdom Talk. Go look them up and subscribe or or whatever you do on... on follow and follow. rate it. Okay. If you're listening to Church Talk, follow follow Kingdom, Kingdom Talk, Talk yeah. on Spotify. And if you haven't subscribed to Church Talk, 
Be sure you do that too. Yep. <laughs> and then vice versa. If you're listening to the podcast, go check Rob and Neil out. Rob and I. You don't understand how many times I do that. Rob and Andrew. I do that to Jen. I'm like Rob and Jen. Or, see, at that time I did it right. I call Jen Neil. <laughs> Rob and Jennifer or Rob and Judah or Rob and Andrew. That time I almost did it. It's, I don't know why. It's all good. It's all good. We, we know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time here, I just look at somebody, make eye contact, and start talking. Yeah. Because <laughs> if I do that, it probably means I may not know your name, your name yet. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you should know me by now. Well, yeah, but I'm not that great with names. <laughs> yeah. So I just look at you, make eye contact, shake my head, smile, and talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if I do that to you, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just stop him and be like, I'm Seth, or I, whatever your name is. But the cool thing is, there'll be people that's like, I'm the same way. What's your name, too? And so, and, and that's, that's, that's cool because we're in front of people. Mm-hmm. And I like that about this church because it, they don't, nobody is like puffed up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're somebody who's in front of people in ministry, um, it, now the lead pastor, you, you need to know who he is. Yeah. You know, but all the other pastors, it's like nobody is puffed up to be something right. new. It's I'm not saying that they're not important. But they're, or equal. Yeah, they're 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 people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're not just superstars. Because, yeah, just because yeah. I have a title, I'm better than you. Right, but right. You don't have a it's, it's not like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's it's really cool to where you know, yeah, you 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 hear pastors, you know, many of the pastors you you do hear their names, but they're not made to they're, they're not glorified. Right. You know, because like Andrew said a moment ago, we're we're servants. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and. So for us to to serve people, it's really it's it's on us as leaders to get to know the people. It's not on the people to come to know us. Because exactly. if we're serving people, uh, we need to be among the people mm-hmm. and and get to know them. And with that relationship, now you can really begin to lead people when they know you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But for me to go out and and like, it's it's hard. It's awkward. It's weird to go to people and be like, hey, what's your name? I've been here for eight months and I don't know you. You know, yeah. and they're probably like, you're dumb. <laughs> you know, you, you, you've been here for eight months and you don't know who I am yet. Well, I just, I'm not good with names. I know your face. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> so when you come out with, you know, with, with that, with that, uh, um, that attitude, I think it's a little bit different, but. But yeah, it's it's a little awkward. You walk up to somebody and you're like, "What's your name again?" Yeah. You know, and you you don't want to offend them because they're like, "I've been here for twenty years. Yeah. You know, everybody knows me." Not really. We're a growing church, <laughs> yeah. and as we grow, we're gonna forget some names on the way. Yeah, <laughs> at least I yeah. will. <laughs> yeah, Deshaun will too because he's. I, I see him over there. Like, yeah, that's right. Do you guys edit your podcast? No, they need edited. Yeah. Editing is your friend. Yeah, and most podcasts, they're either live or recorded as if they're live. Mm-hmm. So they, they just kind of, they have all these talking points so they can avoid all of this silence because if they're live, they can't just cut it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, uh, Usually you see them, they got their laptop in front of them, and so they have all their points and stuff there, and there's like a moderator or something. And Yeah. Yeah. But I don't listen to podcasts i watch some of them on youtube just because they come up and but i don't realize it's a podcast Mm -hmm. because you know i'm watching it yeah (laughs) (laughs) editing and post though if you're not live you don't have to worry about the silence you can just cut it right out and nobody knows yeah crossfade it so you don't get a little in the track i do that a bunch because i will mess up a bunch yeah (laughs) yeah um so when we first started this, I went to work, and I was like, yo, yo, you got to check out this podcast. And I, they're like, what podcast? And I'm like, the one that I just started, <laughs> that me and my, you know, me and my friend just started. And they're like, oh, okay. And, like, so they went and checked it out, and they're like, okay. And then I told one of them that I was bringing video in. And he was like, oh, that's going to be really good. 
And I was like, yeah, okay. Because at first I was not like, I hate being in front of a camera. Don't like it. Um, Podcasts but, are different, though, because yeah. you, can, you can just have a conversation. You don't right. have to look at the yeah. camera. Um, it's just there capturing everything. And you, you right. once you get involved in your conversation, you just forget about it. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I found, like, with, with any time I would, like, be interviewing anybody, I take the awkwardness because I'll look at the camera and talk. And I'm finally getting to the point where I can talk to the camera now, uh, for the most part, without making a bunch of mess ups. Um, I still mess up quite a bit, but not near as much as I did when I first started because it's just it's weird. But once you get past the weirdness of, of talking to a camera, um, what I found like interviewing people is they never even look at the camera. They looked at me the yeah. entire time. Yep. And yeah. But once they got into the conversation, you couldn't tell that they were nervous at yeah. all. Uh, if, you, if you watched... Uh, uh, the one about the young adults with Pastor Anson, he was, he did not want to be on camera at first. He told me, he's like, I, this, is, this is not my comfort zone. And, and even Rebecca, she's like, I'm just going to look at you. I'm not going to look. I'm not, that camera's not even there. <laughs> so, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it, it, once people start the conversation, they, they tend to forget about the camera. Yeah. Yeah. In total, they talked for a couple hours and I didn't have a tripod yet. <laughs> oh. That was hard on him that day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, when I, I say this like it was forever ago, but when I started recording weddings, me and a buddy used, me and a buddy still do, uh, but like had that big camera and then the cage and a microphone and everything, like a little screen up here. And so holding it. And so it was, it's heavy. I still have a scar. Just kidding. It went away. But <laughs> last time I checked, I had a scar, I promise. But no, where the can where the mic was just sitting on Digging my phone. Down into you. Yeah, and he did it a different way. He would like interview like all the bridesmaids and the grooms, and so like you said, like they'd be nervous, and then like you get them talking, and they were like, all that just goes away. It's yeah, pretty fun. Yeah, you get one of those wearable rigs. Yeah, they make them where rig. they have the arm either in the front with the stabilizer that looks like a pole. Yeah, or they have the one where they have like this big. Uh, thing that goes the, over your yes, head. Yes, the easy And rigs. it hangs from the yes. top there. Yeah, I want, hmm. I want those. Or a gimbal. Yeah. Gimbal's still pretty heavy, but it's easy. Just put the gimbal on the easy rig. So we have two <laughs> cameramen right here mm -hmm. that, if, if you guys don't know, uh, Seth takes a ton of pictures. If you're, if you're watching this and you go to the Bridge website or the Bridge Facebook page, a lot of those pictures that you see was probably taken by Seth. And if you watch online, some of or maybe a lot of what you're watching was probably uh, taken from Andrew. And mm -hmm. then they're all put together by our, uh, by our, our tech director, Deshaun. Deshaun. So it's like, man, we have an awesome team of people. And this, this has been a cool collab. Uh, Collaboration. Yeah. Say that quickly. Get the time no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very fun yes. collaboration. Up to it again. Yes. 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 Yeah. With all your equipment, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll have some talking points and and uh, we'll we'll make a we'll do a few episodes out of out of one. We'll just have you guys out to the studio sometime, and we'll just have yeah. a day of just making however many you guys want to do. Just do them. Yep. And bring your bring whoever you want for your uh, uh, your guest that day, and then I'll do a few um, church talks along with you, and we'll just make a make a day of it. And yeah, have yeah. some pizza or something, or we'll cook <laughs> out or something cool. like that. Okay. Yeah, uh, where we live, you can't nobody will bring us anything unless it's like your parents or something. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> we live too far away from everything for anybody to bring us any food, uh, but. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do something. Yeah, like that. that'd be that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. and it, if you do three at once, it might take three hours, but then you get three weeks off. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah, but once you get rolling with it, you can have the same guest and just do different subjects, mm -hmm. cut it in half or cut it in to thirds or whatever, and get three episodes with one guest, and then the next guest rolls in. You do the same thing, so you may have a full day worth of of recording. Yeah, you got three months off. Yeah. yeah. 
but you can't really have three months off because then yeah. you get out of your groove. Yeah. 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 Or you could use the days off or the weeks off as needed. Like if you're going on vacation, yep. just take a video or a podcast out of your backlog mm-hmm. and right. we you, have, you got a good cushion. Yeah, we have thought about that. Yeah. Because yeah. they're just going to – life happens. Yeah. Plans yeah. change. Yep. So it's better to have extra than to be like, yep. And no, I like it. No I like it that we one. have two hosts in case, like, one of us can't make it. Yep. The mm-hmm. other one can fill in. Yeah. And we, we both can do the same, just about everything. I can eat just as much as Hunter can. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It was fun. I'm uh, super excited that you all guys got to come. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. Yep. I'm glad you guys agreed to be on Search Talk, too. <laughs> yeah. When they, when they told me, like, hey, we want to have you come on. Like, hey, I'll just bring our gear and we'll just do a, 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 a YouTube episode as well. And he's like, yeah, that'd be cool. So, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's been good. And I don't know that we really talked about a whole lot of stuff. It seemed like I think we did. I think we got some good subjects in, but mm-hmm. but I, I I think we we probably talked more about just stuff in general yeah. than, you know, important things. But that's part of it. That's yeah. part of podcasts, right? Part of YouTube videos, too. It's like yeah. just you just talk. Sit around and in talk. The, in the middle of your conversation, something good comes out, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's been at least 40 minutes, so. Yeah, it's good. Our podcast episodes range from 20 minutes to an hour. So. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I was told that Deshaun's was the longest one of about 43 minutes. Yeah. So if we've been yeah. about 40 minutes, we've got to go for three more minutes <laughs> at least. <laughs> right, we got to well. be at least three more minutes. <laughs> so I can add on to something. Um, when you were talking about how we would have, like, 100 to... 1,000 to 100,000 to a million. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like what I always tell myself. It doesn't matter if I have one person listening. Just as long as I can reach out and get somebody closer to God. That's that's kind of what I... That's when I came into this podcast. uh, That was my thing. Was I didn't care about the fame. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get people to know God. And I had a buddy at work tell me that it was like church, but not in church. Mm. And it's always going to be there for him to go back. If he's struggling, you know, if, if he's down one day, you know, he can go listen to the podcast, you know, cheering back up, you know, getting back up. Yeah. Yeah. And two, once you do it more and more, you can do it just for the fun of it. You streamline your setup, you just have a conversation, and it's yeah. not even like a, a job you have to do. Like, right. well, we have this podcast, now we have to pump out content. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When it's easy to set up, you just sit down in front of a few microphones, hit record, and go. Yeah. Yeah. A few cameras, too, if you're doing video, you know, once you incorporate that. But, right. you know, streamline streamline yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it, it'll get there, too. I know right now you guys are, are setting up after a Wednesday Wednesday evening, if mm-hmm. you guys are, are listening or watching. Uh, right now, it's Wednesday night after uh, um, after Wednesday evening church. Um, you guys you guys release yours, what, on Sundays? Yeah. Yes, yeah, Sunday so is at 12. Sunday's at 12, cool. Yep. I usually release uh, mine on uh, Thursday mornings at about 8 o'clock. I try to put it out like the schedule for whatever. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. right. Uh, so I should have one coming out in the morning. You guys will you guys will be out on noon on Sundays. Yep. Yep. Noon o'clock. <laughs> cool. I can I can see this being a whole lot larger than what you think. I, I can I can see this taking off. And because your your hearts and your minds aren't in a place of we want to do this to be something or to be somebody or to be whatever. Um uh, but you, number one, it's it's a fun thing to do. There's nothing wrong with 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 doing this for fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but while you're doing it for fun, there's purpose in it, right? And the purpose isn't about getting money, but um, it's it's more of a spiritual purpose. It's more of of just sharing um, whatever subject the Lord puts on your heart. 
because mm-hmm. yeah. the things that you guys are just going through and you talk about, other people are going through the same thing. So as you just talk about those things from your from your perspective as as young Christian men, it's going to touch a lot of people. It's going to touch a lot of hearts, and I, I can see the I can see the Lord taking this and using it more than what you think. Mm-hmm. And my prayer for you guys is that the Lord will open doors to where you do have that place to where you can have a a simple setup that's already there that the work is going out of mm-hmm. it and the fun can just flow yeah. and the conversations can flow. And I also pray that the Lord will just set it up to where it does bring in an income, whether it takes over your, you know, and, and that's what you do for a living or it just gives into your you know, into your household. And that that's my prayer is that the Lord just bless you in that. And I know sometimes it takes a little bit of time to, I mean, my goodness, I mean, you, you look at some of these people that uh, they've been doing podcasts for years or YouTube for years, and they're finally getting to the point of being monetized. So, uh, but when we think about, I want to get monetized, want to get monetized, it's like, that becomes why we're doing what we're doing. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. when you like, when you guys are just having fun with it, you know, like I'm not really thinking about about that. It's like that's when it can happen really quickly. Because yeah. number one is you're having fun doing what you're doing, but number two is like your heart's right. You don't yeah. care about that. And then, yeah. then it's like, you know, it's like Solomon when when um, the Lord's like, "What do you want?" And it's like, "I want wisdom." Yeah, and. So what did he get? He got wisdom and riches and everything else because he didn't ask to be rich. He asked, give me wisdom so I know how to lead your people. Yes. And it's like, so when we come to the Lord with the right thing, kind of goes back to what you were talking about a little bit ago, your your scripture. Ask yeah. what you want. When we ask for the right thing and it's pleasing to the Lord, it's like we get so much more than mm-hmm. what we ask for. But yeah. if we would have asked for the the fleshly thing, the thing that, that we want, um, that's where James says, it says in James that, you know, we, we ask a miss, we don't get what we're asking for because we're, we're asking upon our own lust, upon our own, our own actions, upon our own, uh, selfish desires. But when yeah. we ask based upon like, what am I going to do with this? What's the purpose of this? And, and you, you come with a pure heart and you ask the Lord something, even for something. And it's like, he gives so much more. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I'm going to give you not only that what you're asking for, but I'm going to give you all the rest of the stuff that you could have asked for, but you didn't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The thing, too, about having fun doing it, if you're not having fun, it's just going to drain you and suck yeah. the life out of you, and then you can't pour anything in anybody else because everything you had was sucked out of you yep. by not having fun. Right. Yeah. So any form of ministry, there should be fun in it because otherwise it's just work. Yeah. yeah. It's not to say it's for sure. Uh, it's not to say there's never hard work, but you should at least enjoy doing what you've been called to do. Right. Yeah. right. If not, it's just like a wake up, man, I got to go do this now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's the thing. When, when you're called to something, it's like, even though there's work involved, it's, fun because you enjoy it yeah it's it's like it's like setting up for you know worship days and things when we gotta we gotta take our our mobile equipment or whatever and and there's a lot of work involved and we're we're there really early to set up and then we lead worship and then we're there really late to tear down and we get up the next day and like oh my goodness i'm tired but i love it because the lord's told us to do it he's given us the grace to do it he's 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 called us to it and so it's like the the work that's involved it's greater than the reward yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't really see it as as I mean it, it is labor it is work but I don't I don't see it that way mm-hmm. it's it's almost like you know a, a football player that goes to practice and and he's working he's lifting lifting weights but he enjoys it he can't wait to get in the weight room he can't wait to go run he can't wait to get on the field because he loves it mm-hmm. it's kind of the same thing it's like he gets to play a game and make a ton of money by playing a game and we're kind of the same way. It's like we may not be getting, you know, being paid a bunch of money to do what we're doing. And many times we're doing it for free. We're doing it for nothing. 
because we love it. Yeah, our reward like, is greater though. Than yeah. Love. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. And our reward is permanent. Yeah, because yes. it's in heaven. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, oh that's fire! <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad we're not in the kitchen. <laughs> we are <laughs> cooking it up. So how long have we been going? Did we beat the record? Oh, At least yeah, fifty we, minutes. Yeah, we shattered it. All right, awesome. Oh. awesome. <laughs> so. Next time Deshaun comes on, he's gonna have to go a little bit longer. Be like, I, I gotta go longer. Than him. <laughs> hey, I still have a bedtime, so not too long. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I gotta get up early in the morning. Well, double the guests, double the content. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been cool, guys. Yes, yeah. very cool. Guys, thank you all so much for watching Church Talk again today. Uh, I was so privileged to be joined by by uh, Hunter, Seth, and my son Andrew, and. Um, you know, we got Gabe and Deshaun here in the room as well, helped set up a bunch of stuff and to collaborate with Kingdom Talk. It's been a, a real joy. Make sure that you go and look up on Spotify, Kingdom Talk. Look these guys up and follow their, their podcast. Listen to them because I do believe that it's going to be something bigger than what they think it is. And uh, you're going to enjoy the conversations. They have a ton of people on. Uh, so far, it's been pretty much a, a lot of people here from the church uh, getting different perspectives and opinions on things that's happened here. Uh, I think they were talking about uh, the last couple was there was a youth retreat that they were talking about and just kind of sharing different experiences. So make sure you guys go uh, look them up. But thank you all for watching Church Talk and we'll see you again next time. God bless you guys. We'll just close in prayer. Hunter, do you want to go? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this time, Lord. Lord, we ask that you just that you just touch everybody that's listening, or maybe just somebody needs something, and the person listening has it for them. Um, we thank you that you just that you put breath in our lungs every day for you, and like our callings that you have called us to do. Lord, we ask that you just keep everybody safe and grow each and every church event. We just ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And guys, don't forget to check out, if you're listening on Spotify, check out Church Talk. Episode 11 in the books. In the books. <laughs>